Controversies drill the circumstances surrounding the release of 334 schoolboys in Kankara Katsina State at some Nigerians kick against the involvement of Mieti Ala. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladende. Welcome to Plus Politics. Let's look at the dominant issue in the polity. It is no news that the schoolboys abducted from a government school in Kankara, Katsina State, have been released. What is a bit surprising, however, is reports that their rescue was facilitated by the Mieti Ala Katu Breeders Association of Nigeria, Makban. Governor Belo Masari has denied claims that the state government paid a ransom in cash to secure the boys' freedom. Earlier on, the governor had denied that the boys had been abducted by the Boko Haram terrorists. Joining us to discuss these and some other issues surrounding the rescue mission is Mr. Dixon Osaje, who is a security expert. Good evening, Mr. Osaje. Thank you, Mr. Kayode, for having me. And also joining us is the spokesperson of Afeni Ferry, and that's a very popular name and a popular face, I must say, Mr. Yinka Odumakin. Good evening, Mr. Odumakin. My pleasure. Yeah, let, let's look at um, the rescue. Um, and a lot of people will say this is quite commendable, looking at the huge number. And as we speak, it appears there is no single casualty. Uh, Mr. Osaji, uh, but trust me, there are still some questions begging for answers. Can you fill us in what the possibility of this rescue mission is? Uh, well, thank you for having me. Uh, we're, we are happy and we are glad to uh, understand that uh, they've been rescued. And uh, there are a lot of questions uh, for us to, uh, that, that, that is begging for answers anyway. Uh, the first question is uh, who were the rescue who, who were the rescue team? Uh, second question is uh, when were they? What time were they rescued? And uh, at what location? And uh, what are the video evidence of their uh, rescue mission in the in, in the front line in the uh, in the forest? Uh, however, uh, the damage has been done uh, because uh, these children are going to live to eternity uh, with this memory that uh, uh, took place uh, some week ago. Uh, this is regrettable that uh, in a country of over 200 million people, uh, the Chibok ladies that were adopted some six years ago uh, never sounded a warning to our security agents. I had expected that uh, based on the high rates of insecurity, uh, the Kansina state government and other parts of the country that are experiencing a high rate of insecurity should have carried out a vulnerability analysis of all our secondary and primary school within the uh, uh, crime-prone environment. If they have carried out a vulnerability analysis or assessment, they will be able to come up with a countermeasure to foresee uh, an impending danger. But here, we expect danger to come, and after the arrival of danger, then we start reacting, either proactively or by response or by media or by military might. I must tell you the truth. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to say I'm ashamed to be a Nigerian, I'm, I'm proud to be a Nigerian, but sometimes I'm ashamed to be a Nigerian mm. uh, because this state of insecurity is worrisome. Uh, the methodology and the approach in which our security agencies are following these uh, issues is worrisome. I had expected the service chief to just take a bow and uh, okay. packet office. As, it's basically so much that in our African region, people don't resign. Okay. Uh, Osaji, your position is right there in the internet. I'm sure you have never bent your position on this. So, but we'll come back to the issue of security chiefs, you know, taking a bow. Mr. Yiko Dumaki, um, I know that uh, we can't have this discussion without making reference to the statement out there from your office or from the group, so to say. What is your worry? I thought everybody should be you know, excited about this? Well, if we are all, uh, if we are all, if we are all in this country, 
we will be on the street dancing by now. But because some of us are, because there are thinking human beings in this country, when the kind of thing happens, when you put two and two together, you analyze. We use our thinking faculty. We are being, we are being treated like school kids who have no gumption. That hundreds of people, boys, will be kidnapped and we'll be talking of rescue without a single shot being fired. And uh, we are still with this kind of a placing. I want us to be excited to be dancing on the streets. Don't forget that this was, um, we had the uh, Chibo girls in 2014. We know what we went through. Up to now, many of those, many of those girls are not back. For 344 boys, so they claim, to be back within this period, and uh, for anybody to be talking about rescue, which rescue? How was how are they rescued? The government announced that Mihi Tiala was negotiating for the release, which confirmed what we have all suspected that the present government in Nigeria is in bed with other troubles in Nigeria. We know how this government has been treating Mihi Tiala with kill gloves. Mihi Tiala people have been going around in Nigeria. In Nigeria. They are led of murder, killing, cell and museum. Not one material person is on, on trial today. And are now to now be the negotiator for the adopted boys, strict volume. And it was like intriguing that when the governor was asked who adopted this people, he said, I have to be, I have to be told by a third party. We are not, we are, 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 we we can put you together, we can see what's going on. This is all a joke, a practical joke. They are playing a game on us as if we don't have thinking faculties. And it's uh, this height that any government can go to in, in, in what's called in what's called deception to deceive Nigerians. We have been deceived. Mr. Yinko Dumaki, I, I, I'm sure this is not the first time we've had this kind of uh, skepticism when we have a case like this. And you, uh, going through your statement, I remember you making reference to 2014, the Chibok girls, that some yes. forces who are in power today also express this kind of skepticism. And a lot of things that went wrong with the government then was that why were they seeing things from the political angle and that the government was not quick enough to swing into action? So our worry as Nigerians is, what could be the gain of the government in pulling this fast one in us? We have videos, we have video evidence of parents crying. As they're part of the, 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 the plan, what could be... I'm just trying to rack my brain. Well, well you know... You you know, you know, you see, you see, you see, you see they say repeat itself twice. The first time was a tragedy, the second time was a farce. Super girl was a tragedy. This is a farce. Hmm. And thinking Nigerians can see through this this whole farce that this is a joke, a practical joke that has just been played on the nation. As far as we are concerned, as any very this old drama was staged to swipe the card. And the card is already swiped, money is already paid, Boko uh, Haram will more okay. empowered. I, I, I'll, come, money to with, I'll come to back to that. Funds, more equipment to terrorize Nigerians. Okay, and, Mr. Yinko uh, Dumake, these are all. These are very strong allegations. I, I will. I will come back to that, that but okay. That. Sorry, I yeah. am the one that asked the question, but um, trust me, we will come back to this. We have the whole of today's program dedicated to this. But let me speak to a security expert, uh, and I also want to ask that same question: mm, uh, What could be the gain? What could be 
I felt it was more of an embarrassment to the government when the president was in his home state and such things was carried out. And why at this time will any government even try this when we are about to go on more worrisome issue, the second wave of COVID? Please, Mr. Dixon, help me out. Uh, Kayade, uh, you need to take your question again because there was an interruption. Okay, quickly, I, I, I asked the same question to you. Now I'm from you now. What I asked in Kodumaki, looking at uh, the possibility of this thing being a scam. I'm talking about a situation where the president was in a state, and a lot of people felt that was an embarrassment to him. So, what could be his gain in this kind of uh, conspiracy theories being suggested here? Uh, Kayode, you see, uh, you know, whenever an incident transpired, uh, there are room for various kind of uh, uh, observation and uh, beliefs. Uh, for me, uh, when I heard about the story, I was so amazed because uh, I remember some few days ago, while I was on the express in Bagada, I saw about two trailers, you know, transporting uh, hundreds of cows. And uh, I know I knew how voluminous those cows were in the trailer. Now we are talking about 300 human beings, 300, 300, 300 people. What were the means of transportation? Were they evacuated by vehicle? What kind of vehicle came to that school to evacuate those guys? These are what we call the fruit of crime. We need to look at the fruit of crime. When they came to the school, what did they come with? Did they come with vehicles? Did they come with helicopters? They came with truck. How many trucks they came with? And why they left that school, our investigation team, how did they trail uh, the, 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 their departure routes? Uh, because definitely that departure route uh, should have been traced. Well, I'm not going to say it, it is a conspiracy theory. I'm going to look at it from a, a security point of view. From security point of view, I think that is a capital defeat uh, to the security architecture of this great country. Uh, we must not allow this to happen again. Uh, if people think uh, it's a stage game, I think uh, we must not gamble with human lives for power. We must not gamble with human lives for our position or to, you know, achieve a kind of praise. You know, what went wrong in Kankara is a disgrace to our national security. What went wrong in Kankara is a disgrace to our country. What went wrong in Kankara is a disgrace. Osage, uh, 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 why you say it's a disgrace? My 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 worry is agreed. The abduction was a disgrace. But don't you think, uh, I, I'm now I'm choosing my word, whether I should call it rescue or release, it's more of commendation for the military where we had no collateral damage, when we had no casualty of any form. These boys came back smiling and happy. Don't you think they, they should get some kudos? Okay, uh, Kyle, they, uh, when I, I watched the video clip of these guys, and uh, I, students that were adopted some few days ago in secondary school, I, I school in the north, Kyle, I, I school in Sokoto State. Uh, all, all my life, I was born and brought up in the north. Uh, I know the kind of uniform we put on in, in the north. I had expected to see 70 to 80% of them with their uniforms. But what I saw, I'm seeing some of them with some private uh, dresses, a mufti, as it may be, and some of them were just looking somewhat tattered. And something came into my mindset. I was thinking that, was it that uh, because of uh, international uh, disgrace, uh, some group of uh, people or uh, our leaders just went and catch up some Almagiri to come and present them? Because I had expected to see these students coming up with their school uniforms. Are you with me, Kyle? So those are, those are scientific evidence. Those are evidence that we need to look at. Now, if you want me to commend the military, has the military come on board uh, to tell us that they actually went for that rescue mission? Now, if the military went for that rescue mission, have they played any clips to us how they went on that rescue mission? What method did they apply in going for that rescue mission? Did they carry out a, a negotiation mechanism? Did they carry out a strike mechanism? Did they, I swear, carry out a rescue and a, a cleanup mechanism? So we need to know the type of mechanism they use to rescue those guys. If it is negotiation, how much did they negotiate with the uh, criminal element? Because I heard the governor very clearly today. He said that uh, no money was paid, but there was negotiation. Now, when you say no money was paid, there was negotiation. What was the negotiation about? Did you negotiate with them that, okay, you are going to give them 
out of our territory? Did you negotiate with them that, okay, you are not going to have vigilante in the state or the military are no longer going to bombard the forest? What were the negotiations and okay. challenges uh, in place? We need to know all these things, Kyle, kind of because my head is getting burned up now. I don't like uh, a situation whereby uh, uh, some people who are privileged to be in power who want to play with the integrity of over 200 million Nigerians. I don't like my brain being played with at all, please. Okay. Let's just uh, get this. Um, I, I know that uh, this might also require some security answers to a lot of questions you've raised. I must say that they are very, very germane, and we will make all every we we'll make every effort to listen to military respond to your questions we will try to speak with them to get their response on this because we are reviewing their operations trust me the second segment is going to be more about political so you have more to tell us this first segment then mr yinka odumaki will tell us more in our second half but in the interim let's let me speak to mr yinka odumaki he has raised some questions and i'm sure you have also raised some questions from your logic, and I'm looking at it, I wouldn't expect that the government would tell us that money exchange hands. But what we don't understand is what kind of negotiation could have happened that we had these boys all back. Remember the video that was released by alleged Boko Haram, where they mentioned that, oh, the vigilantes should back off, the military should back off. Don't you think these are all signals that might be involved in the negotiation. Well, the so-called negotiation, uh, if a president to go to buy, cannot be done anything about money. You remember when they released some keyboard girls that time? It was what secure that told us that this government paid 50 million euros to Boko Haram. And it took weeks before I like that money to make a people denier, which was not convincing. And uh, but this is what she's gonna put that out there. Then there was two million, two million euros that has been paid to Boko Haram. And this one for this week release, which some in social media dubbed. Um, uh, it's called the uh, uh, rescue. We believe that money must have been paid. Uh, not, when the Americans came to rescue their season, we know what was involved. A rescue without a single shot being fired, 344 people. Like my colleague said, 344. How are they carrying? How are they taking? And that's why I said at the beginning of this program that we should not be treated like as if we are all amateurs that we don't have any brain at all. We have brains. We can read with our brains. We know this is the specialty of malady in Nigeria, and that there is what 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 appear at the highest level, which is deception. We are being deceived. A wool you pull over our very, our very eyes. And the truth of what's going on at the appropriate time will come out. But there's no doubt that uh, Patriot money more than Twitter on this. Hmm. And we, from the way the other thing went, from the abortion, all the drama, the very people responses by the federal government, you know, that was here was saying that only 10, only 10, only, only 10 boys are kidnapped. But Garibashi, it's on more. record that Garibashi has apologized that uh, he eh? made that. It is on record that uh, Garibashi has apologized that uh, he said that only 10 boys were kidnapped. He has apologized. And but but, but don't, don't, don't also forget that, don't forget that even, even, when, even, even, when, even when they went to kidnap some people in Sadan Kadran, it was Garibashi that was giving the reasons. But why, why it happened? I see the member, member Boko Haram. So clearly, when you put everything together, it's not difficult for intelligent people to see that there's a game as in played on Nigerians. Okay. And that, and that game is very cheap. 
as well as treat with it. So you go to my, uh, my next question is a bit emotional. Let me get your response on that, and I'll go back to Saji. It's a bit emotional. Okay. I, I, I saw some parents, uh, uh, even in international media, not just local media, you know, you know, already carrying out the protest to say that government is not doing enough. Government is not doing enough. And these parents yeah. have their boys back in their homes. How would they feel to say that uh, this was all a scam? Don't you think, you remember the stories of Chibo girls? I keep referring to that. You said one was a tragedy and this one is a scam. Don't you think you're being selective in your analysis? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not being selective at all. It's so clear that Nigerians, we are being scammed on daily basis on these terror things and its legion. Uh, we, for so apart from the, the main pillar that that the facilitator of the negotiation, I mean, it's 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 it, 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 so me like I like I said, like I said in the statement, it's idiocy in governance for a government to admit that Mehita is using Mehita to negotiate a Mehita Allah is a terror group. It means that they are using Mehita Allah to negotiate the release of the boys. That tells you all the game that's going on. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, like human beings, we have to go to the boys who may, who may, who may have been used as uh, to carry out Okay. This uh, joke on Nigerians. Okay. Uh, these are without their knowledge. This is another. We have to worry about their parents. They are they are back. Okay. I, I know this is another controversy you put up, uh, calling Mietiala a terror group. This uh, the last time I checked, they have not been declared a terror group. But we will come back to that. Trust me. But let me quickly get uh, Saji's comments on your position and let me get his reaction. Uh, do you also think? Like some would believe that Mr. Yin Kaudumaki is speaking more like criticizing the government and not looking at things holistically. Dixon. I can't tell Mr. Yin has spoken his mind. And, uh, you know, that's what we call perception management. You know, uh, perception is, is, uh, is an integral part of subtext. Uh, the way people, uh, what people think about you, what people say about you matters a lot. And uh, from the international community, what people say about Nigerians and Nigeria as a country really matters. Uh, what he has stated very clearly is from his own point of view, and uh, I, I will not, uh, uh, you know, arrive at his own uh, uh, perception. I have my own uh, different uh, perception, and that's from security point of view. But he raised some uh, technical questions, and that I will actually agree with him that uh, on what authority or on what basis as a federation, that uh, Allah has uh, a sole responsibility to go for a rescue mission on uh, the citizens of Nigeria. I am not from the Republic of Mieti Allah. I am from the Republic of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And uh, kidnapping is, an, uh, is a, national, uh, it's a national case, and it has to be treated with national uh, 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 security forces. Uh, if the Nigerian government projects or projected uh, Mieti Allah uh, to go after these guys, I really don't understand what they are trying to achieve. Okay. That is going to be uh, an operational error, and it's really going to be condemnable and really going to call for uh, international uh, scrutiny. Uh, because uh, these are some group of people uh, who have personally had uh, their leader uh, uh, spoke about threatening, uh, uh, threatening words to this great nation. How are they? I don't understand where we are driving to, but uh, we need to understand something. That uh, no uh, group of people, no organization, no uh, uh, security forces uh, are greater than Nigeria. Nigeria is a great nation. Uh, we must accept that. And the sole responsibility of this government is to protect its citizens. But once that protection uh, uh, mechanism is being defeated, that is where uh, crime comes to take place. Okay. Like I rightly told you earlier, all these children are going to live with this story till the, till the end of their life. So uh, I would want. Uh, uh, and uh, some investigation bodies uh, to come and investigate the okay. role of Yeti Allah. Uh, if they actually play the role, then uh, I would not say congratulations. I would want to know on what authority or on what constitutional back is uh, do they have to okay. go into the rescue mission uh, with this Okay, Dixon, 
Trust me, the second time, I don't know whether you have much to say, but we'll quickly go to the streets now. We spoke to some Nigerians who expressed their opinion on this controversial rescue, or you call it release. Let's take a listen. I'll be back shortly. Please, let's go to the street and hear what Nigerians had to say. To have the child being kidnapped, you know? When you give back to your child, for giving back to a child, carrying the child for nine months, and then at the end of the day, they just say the baby or the boy is no more or something like that. So every mother will be so happy to see the child back again. I feel good about it. In the sense that we are talking about children. We all have our kids. If we don't see our kids, we'll be worried. I don't, I, I'm not care about the way, how, what they did to get them, but thank God the, the, the children are back to, to their parents. For me, I feel the fact that the guys are back to their parents' houses or it's just the best to be curious. At this season, I can't imagine any parents crying over the fact that my child is missing. The rescue of the boys so far from this, you know, I don't see much about it because I know the Nigerian people. Even after this one, another one will soon come. They will say that they don't kidnap another people. But this one, a film trick. They should stop deceiving us. It's tricky, but then I like to see it as a plus for the government somehow because, I mean, people have been on the, the stage did kind of conversation, but then it, it was the same thing with good luck. People said they staged the Chibok thing. So I just want to see it as the government responding to a security threat in the country. And yeah, I like to give them credit to an extent for that. I don't want to see it as political.